Wow. That's probably original. It looks like it leans. Is that leaning? Hey, welcome back to the channel, you wonderful, beautiful YouTube people. We are going to be doing another tour video right here. It's York, England, the most medieval city on earth. The most. That's a bold claim. We did the most walkable city on earth. Now we're going to do the most medieval city on earth, York, England, um, right here. It's a tour through the most medieval city on earth, and its original channel is Project Gaia. So uh, make sure you go check that out. There will be a link in the description section down below. I'm going to go ahead and hit subscribe and hit like on this video. And uh, you guys should probably jump over there and at least hit like on the original video. That's only fair. And let's see, uh, let's see what this is all about, guys. Today we are in oh, York, yeah. England, the most medieval city in the world. The city is filled with history around every corner and really makes you feel like you are in the heart of a medieval town. Historic castles, foreboding sitting walls, narrow cobblestone paths, fascinating ruins, grand churches, and more await you in this enchanting North England city. I was always wondering, actually... Um... Okay, so New York was originally called New Amsterdam when it was in the control of the Dutch. The Dutch people is the ones that's, uh, that founded it, right? Well, then somehow they traded uh, something to, to England for it, and England took over, and they renamed it to New York. So I was thinking, okay, well, there's clearly going to be a place in England called York, right? They named it after this place, I would assume, but I've never seen anything about York, England, so... We're definitely going to see today. We're going to learn about the most medieval city. I love medieval stuff. I mean, it'd be so cool to go there and visit. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Project Gaia. Today, we are here in York, England. Now, York, England is one of the best preserved medieval cities in the world. So you're going to see a lot of medieval architecture. Nice. Very small kind of meandering lanes going through some really old streets and blocks through here and you're going to see some fascinating churches castles streets walls it really is a very cool place to see so what we're going to do on this tour is we're going to show you the best things to do and see while you're here in new york so let's begin let's begin i'm excited New York is surrounded by walls, and there are several city gates like this one that permitted people inside and out of the city. It was a form of protection in ancient and medieval times, and today you still ceremoniously walk through these gates when entering the old city center. Nice. That is so cool looking. Like, man, look at these places. Like, look at this. Right there. Look at those houses. Are those like original or just rebuilt in that style? But man, that is just, that is so cool looking to me. Lone's Court. York's story stretches back over two millennia and was founded by the Romans in 71 AD. Jeez. It was known as Eboracum and served as the capital of the Roman province of Britain Inferior. The city played a crucial role in shaping England's destiny during the medieval period as it became a key Viking settlement known as Jorvik in the 9th century and most of the narrow streets are built on top of these ancient and medieval civilizations. York's history is a tapestry of Roman, Viking, medieval, and modern English influence, making it a captivating destination for history lovers. Walking through York is quite literally walking back in time and will leave you feeling in complete awe. Like, look at the architecture. That is crazy. So cool.
So one thing you for sure have to check out when you're here in York is York Castle. So that's obviously behind me. York Castle is almost 1,000 years old. So this tower was constructed in 1069. And you go inside and you see a fabulously preserved mid early medieval castle, right? So it's very interesting. It has those big, thick stone walls. Um, it has a bunch of cool little rooms in it. And you can head to the top and get amazing views of York. So let's head in. Hell yeah. Clifford's Tower was originally built by William the Conqueror as part of York Castle in the 11th century. As you walk through the castle, notice the thick, impenetrable stone walls and centuries-old spiral staircases. Could you imagine, like, being back in that actual time period and roaming through those streets like a thousand years ago? That got... That'd be so cool. Clifford's Tower has a long history, but the most infamous event that took place here was a mass suicide in 1190 when the Jewish community sought refuge inside the tower during anti-Semitic riots and ultimately set themselves on fire. Ew. It's gotta be haunted then. It for sure gotta be haunted, right? Okay, are you ready to see the coolest bathroom ever? Let's head into this. Yeah, actually, let's do it. Oh, this is going to be one of those old, uh, those castle bathrooms where it was like, it's just like a hole. You got like a plank board, right? Kind of like an outhouse, right? Just a hole that drops down and just all the way down. And then on the outside of the castle, you would have like the bottom opening to where like the peasants would scoop out the shit. Is that correct? Is that what this is going to be like? Oh, the king's latrine, huh? This room, known as the garter robe, has been inaccessible since the 17th century. Inaccessible. Since the 1600s, so wonder why. It was built for King Henry III as a royal toilet latrine in the mid-13th century. The latrine on this floor complemented two others on the ground floor. It was designed to a high standard. There was originally a wooden seat under the window mounted above a stone-lined shaft running down to the top of the mound. Opposite the seat was a niche where lamps could be placed. The tower's designers created a remarkable mechanism for flushing the toilet. Rainwater, they flushed it? I thought it just went through like a straight up hole, like a like an outhouse. That's interesting. Maybe the rest of the toilets do, but not the king's. The king could flush his, right? Rainwater collected in a cistern on the roof and was directed down the stone channel on the left side of the seat. Okay, you can see it here in the diagram there. Um, there are no other known examples of this device in England. It predates the supposed invention of the flushing toilet by three centuries. So he'd probably just pull a lever and it just comes through, huh? Very interesting. Oh, and that's... That's just an interesting, crazy thought to just be sitting there where a king would have done his business. Like, so much history. And wait a minute. I thought it was inaccessible. Oh, because there's one right there. Okay, so that's a regular toilet. And then you got the king's toilet beyond that wall, beyond that doorway. From the top of the tower, you get fantastic panoramic views of York and the surrounding countryside. Oh, so hold on. That sucks. That's not the original roof. That's a bummer. I want to walk around on the original roof. I want to see what that looks like. Not this weird wooden thing they put there. Although it's probably not safe to walk on. That might be why they did this. So make sure you make the climb to the top. Very cool. Yeah, you can see down here the original stone uh, defenses, like where the where the where the guys with the arrows would, would be at the top for like defense. I, I would like to go down in that area, but it's it's probably not allowed. I would assume. So the city of Bjork has an over 2,000 year old history. So you're gonna see that as you go around, right? So most of it is medieval, right? What you can visually see. But if you look at the walls around the city, you're gonna be able to see that. 
for example, right here, right? So this here is part of the Roman walls. And you can see the difference in the front. Okay. The wall here is the medieval walls. So when you're going around the city, take a look at that because it really helps you see the difference in times. Very cool. Now, one place I recommend you have lunch between all of your sightseeing is the York waterfront. And that's where we are now. So you walk along here, it's all cobblestone streets along the river, and there's tons of pubs and there's a lot of outdoor seating. So definitely if it's a nice day, check this out. Yeah. If I'm ever able to go over the there. The York waterfront along the River Ouse is a picturesque and vibrant area that adds to the city's charm. This waterfront has played a pivotal role in the city's history, serving Fish as a chips. vital trade route during the medieval period. Today it is more used as a drinking, eating, and recreation spot. Make sure you take a leisurely stroll along the promenade and take a boat tour if you have the time. The York Waterfront is a place where history meets contemporary life, making it a must-see for visitors. Okay, yeah. Cathedral? St. If you Mary's want church. to take a break on your adventure, stop into St. Mary's Church. The origins of the church can be traced back to the 11th century, and its impressive stained glass windows, intricate stonework, and serene interior provide a tranquil retreat from the hustle and bustle of York's medieval streets. Very cool. I got to go check out these stained glass windows again. So this is this is what they would have been dressed like, the kings and queens, bishops or whatever, right? If, as long as this is an original stained glass window, which I would assume it is. I love stained glass windows. I mean, they, they're they just really unique. They're art. I mean, they really are pieces of art. Yeah, very cool. From the hustle and bustle of York's medieval streets. Look at this. You got the medieval architecture down there in the end. And then you got like some semi-modern looking buildings right there on the right. And then on the left, you got like a futuristic cash machine. <laughs> this is just a whole mashup of different things. And then, of course, you got like what looks like a castle tower in the background. We are now at arguably the most interesting site in York. We are at the Shambles. Now, the, the Shambles, Shambles? Is the Shambles. Arguably best preserved medieval street in the world. So what it is basically is a commercial corridor that goes right through the center of York and it's just filled with all these really cool medieval stores, right? So um, if you're into Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter's Diagon Alley was modeled after this. So it looks just like Diagon Alley. It's really cool to see. I was thinking that actually in the back of my mind, I'm like this, I didn't say anything about it, but I was thinking like that kind of Gives you that Harry Potter vibe. That is so cool. Sham the Shambles. Nice. The Shambles is a truly enchanting medieval street that will quite literally transport you back in time. Its name is derived from the Old English word shamel, referring to the benches or stalls where butchers would display their meats. Make sure you stop into the shop that must not be named. The shop that must not be named. And it's a Harry Potter themed store, it looks like. That's cool. To harness your inner child and quite literally provide you with the Diagon Alley experience you've always wanted. Inside you will find tons of interesting and unique Harry Potter merchandise, as well as house specific options. I got this Slytherin alumni hat. As you continue to explore the store, you can buy a wand specific to your personality, like an Ollivander's, and pick really? up a chocolate frog along with a famous witch and wizards card. This place That's is cool. a Harry Potter fan's heaven on earth. I'm not like a Harry Potter fanatic or anything, but like I read a lot of the books, not all of them, and then I watched uh, a lot of the movies. Again, not all of them. They're good. They're good, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go buy a bunch of Harry Potter merchandise, but I think it's super cool though. It really is.
The Shambles narrow and cobblestone streets are flanked by leaning timber frame structures seemingly pushing towards each other creating a canyon in the street below. This yeah. creates a picturesque and almost fairy tale like ambiance. The biggest craze in the Shambles these days is York Ghost Merchants. This store always has a line that is at least an hour long and inside you can buy an ornamental ghost specifically made in York to fit your unique style and personality. What is what does that mean? An ornamental ghost that'll fit your personality? That's interesting. And again, we got awesome architecture here. Is this all original? Like those original wood beams and stuff? Like it literally looks like a theme park. Ooh, chocolate. The Fudge. shambles could get quite busy and all the shops open around 10 a.m. If you want the shambles completely to yourself, I'd recommend getting here before everything opens around 9 a.m. The shambles. The ancient street of the butchers of York, mentioned in the Domesday Book of William the Conqueror. It takes its name from the word shamel, meaning the stalls or benches on which the meat was displayed. Later versions of which can still be seen. It was rebuilt about 1400 when it presumed when it assumed its present present character very cool right off of little shambles there is a courtyard that serves as a sort of city market here you can find everything from various merchandise fruits and vegetables meats souvenirs food carts and more this is the perfect place to stop and eat or to take a rest from the hustle and bustle of the main corridor Very cool. It is. It's like going to a theme park. Fish and chips. Yum. If you want to try some of the best scones in the world, I recommend you check out Parlor Made located right on the shambles. Have your morning coffee and scone from the 600-year-old attic as you peer down at the medieval shopping street below. So much Next, history there. check out the Society of Chemists. This sorcery-themed soap and fragrance store really is unique. It has a dark and edgy vibe playing deep underground house music and has some interestingly named soaps, perfumes, candles, and colognes like Dragon's Breath. Okay. I wonder what that smells like. I want to smell like a dragon. I don't know. <laughs> when I when I say it like that, I want to smell like a dragon's breath. It kind of s sounds like that would sound that would smell terrible. But of course, with it being clone named that, I'm I'm sure it smells good. But <laughs> very interesting. Viking lovers are going Jorvik? to love the Jorvik Viking Center. This museum teaches you all about York's Viking era history. The museum is actually built on top of the remains of a Viking archaeological site, and you can see the ruins in the basement. Okay. You begin the experience on a sort of amusement park ride where you glide through a recreated animatronic Viking village. Now it definitely looks like a theme park. The next part of the museum exhibits artifacts and remains found nearby from Jorvik, or York's Viking era past. Oh, that's a cool way to smash a coin. So we got Black Swan Freehouse, 15th century house. So that's from the 1400s, huh? What's Freehouse mean? Is that like a hostel or something? Now, a must-see in York is the York City Walls, which are behind me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Americans for miles, right? So these are 2,000-year-old walls. Roman right? walls. So they started in the Roman era, and yep. they were expanded in the medieval era. And basically what they do is they serve... This area looked very different in medieval times when the city wall continued right to the edge of the River Fosse. Then a bridge allowed horse-drawn wagons to bring goods into this city from Hayworth Moor and the Royal Force of Galtris. The earliest recorded bridge dates from 1309. Wow. Over the centuries, the bridge suffered many in 
Indignities. It was partially broken down in 1644, was rebuilt in 1829, and enlarged in 1926. It was finally demolished and replaced in 1996 by the two new bridges you see today. There are no walls between Laerthorpe and the Red Tower because for 700 years York was defended on this side by a man-made lake known as the King's Fish Pole. The lake began to silt up in the 17th century, forming marshy lands, which gave rise to the name Foss Islands Road. Okay, cool. Circumnavigate York. So you go, it's about two miles to go all the way around them, but there's a couple access gates. So you walk up to it and it affords you beautiful views of York. And it really is amazing because you're kind of walking on the old city walls. You can really experience what medieval people experienced when they were guarding the city. So let's head in. Nice. The York City Walls, often considered some of the finest medieval walls in England, encircle the historic center of York stretching for over two miles. They were originally built by the Romans in the 3rd century AD, and some of the Roman remains are still visible. Whether you're a history buff or simply seeking panoramic views, a walk on the walls provides a memorable experience and a sense of connection to the past. I think I'm a history buff. Even here, like where I'm sitting at in my house, I've often thought like, what did this look like hundreds of years ago, right? I would have been in the middle of a field, perhaps. Maybe there's a Native American village because there's a lake close to me. And a lot of times Native Americans and stuff would create villages, you know, close to lakes and stuff, of course, so that they can, you know, for wildlife and water and stuff. But it just, you know, just to sit here or like sitting outside out front and drinking my coffee when it's nice out. Every now and then I'll wonder, like, what did this look like before all these houses were here? Like back when it was just possibly a Native American village or maybe it was just, a, you know, old fields, overgrown trees. Like I'm always wondering, you know, and then you go to like historic places like this and it's just like, man. This is where somebody was walking 2,000 years ago and has walked for the past 2,000 years. It is just crazy, mind-blowing, really. Like, I I wish time travel was real. Oh, my goodness. I would just... <laughs> I'd be doing some time traveling, guys. I'd be checking out some stuff. In AD 71, the Roman army established a fortress on the banks of the River Ouse called Eboracum. You are standing above the remains of the eastern corner tower of this fortress and further to your right, those of an in interval tower. The fortress was rectangular in shape and covered in an area of 20 hectares, which is 50 acres. There were four large gatehouses on the sides of today's St. Helens Square. King's Square northeast of the treasurer's house and under Bethum Bar. The wall here stands to its original height of five meters and the tower rose at least three meters above that. The wall continues beneath the grass as present ground level is nearly three meters higher than that of the Roman city. Okay, so it's gained three meters of ground. I think the earth keeps getting bigger, honestly, because a lot of archaeological sites like Egypt or, you know, wherever... You got to dig down to find stuff, you know. I think the earth gets bigger, you know, space dust, whatever. I don't know what the cause is, but just stuff gets, the earth gets bigger, I think. Uh, it says, the Romans left York around AD 410, but the legacy of their defensive walls remains. In a generally good condition, the northwest and northeast walls still stand today. They are only visible in a few places that, as they are covered by the grass, grassed over medieval ramparts. Excavations in York revealed clues to life in the fortress, including barracks, blocks, boathouses, and an elaborate system of drains and sewers, but much still remains hidden beneath our feet. Very cool. I love history. If you guys love this channel, do me a favor and hit subscribe, hit, a, hit like, share this with your friends. Helps more than you know. So one thing to note about the York City walls, it is is it is not ADA accessible, right? So we It's not what accessible about the York City walls. It is is it is not ADA accessible, right? So wheelchairs are no go up here. Strollers okay. 
Aronogo as well. Now, I have something called the yo-yo stroller, which is actually very popular in European countries, and it folds up and it works great along cobblestone streets. So what okay, I did okay. is I just folded mine up and uh, my daughter just walked along with me. So if you wanna see the walls, you can't bring a stroller unless you have this one. Um, I highly recommend the stroller. I have the link uh, below the description. So check that out if you're interested. There you go, guys. Monk, Monk Bar, Bar is one of several city gate entrances used to enter and exit the city in medieval and Roman times. Monk Bar was built in several stages, beginning in the early 14th century. Its top story was added in 1484 during the reign of Richard III. When first built, Monk Bar had a gated bar barbican, a roofless walled enclosure to guard the approach to the main gateway, removed in 1825. The gateway to the the gateway contained a Portcullis, which remains in place to this day. A series of murder holes overhead allowing missiles to be dropped onto any attackers drawing too close. Yeah, those murder holes, uh, sometimes they would pour like hot tar, all sorts of stuff down those things. It's, yeah, I've seen, uh, I don't remember what channel, but I've seen a video on that. As well as being part of the city's defenses, Monk Bar has also been used as a temporary prison and pol a police house. It retains two of its medieval toilets, known as guard robes, garter robes. Uh, the figures on top of the bar represent men hurling boulders. It is now it it is now houses the Richard III Experience Visitor Attraction, managed by the Jorvik Group. Each one of these gates have a fascinating history and can be used to access the York City walls. The Golden Slipper. My favorite part of York is the enchanted energy of the city. Not many places in the world offer such an uninterrupted city center with original architecture and a lack of big box retail and restaurants. Walking around here is like walking in a storybook world. Yeah. One that brings out the kid in you and makes you feel happy and warm. History is around every corner and you can't help but gawk at the city's beauty. Very cool. That cathedral looks crazy cool. Stonegate. Stonegate is another area that you should check out. This retail area is filled with unique stores and pubs, all within a medieval setting. This is basically a less touristy and less crowded version of the Shambles. Less touristy. I like that. You gotta get off the beaten path, guys. Wow. That's probably original. It looks like it leans. Is that leaning? I bet it, that's crazy looking. It looks like it's gonna fall down. So after seeing all of these historic buildings, you're probably interested in seeing what the inside of the medieval building looks like. Well, yeah. that's where you come here for. This is called Barley, Barley Hall. Hall. Discover a restored medieval townhouse once home to a Lord Mayor of York, right in the heart of the modern city. And it's behind me. So this is a home from the 1300s that was recently found and restored. And you go in and you learn all about life in the Middle Ages and what it was like to live in York during medieval times. What does it mean recently found and restored? Was it lost? Like in the middle of a city, just nobody knew it was there? I don't understand that. Barley Hall. This beautifully restored townhouse offers visitors a captivating glimpse into the life and times of 15th century England. Originally built for a wealthy merchant, the hall showcases exquisite timber-framed architecture, authentic period furniture, and recreated interiors. The museum is also good for kids as there are a variety of things they can play with to learn more about the history in a fun way. Cool. Barley Hall allows you to step into a medieval household and helps you to get better acquainted with and better understand York's rich medieval heritage. Christ crossed be my speed and all your your to proceed. 
And then it's got the alphabet, and then it says, EST, amen. Our Father that art in houses, hallowed be thy name. Thy room or kingdom come. That's old English, huh? To be thy will, don't in hearth as in heaven. Yo, to us today, your eighth day's bread. And for you, our debt is that our sin, all's will forgiven to our debts, that is to men that haunt sin in us. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look at all the spelling differences. That makes it hard to read. Now a must-see when you're here in York is York Minster, which is behind me. Now this is the main cathedral in York, and this is something that you must see in life. It oh, really is something that you should have in your bucket list because this is one of the greatest world cathedrals, right? So inside, it is fantastically beautiful. It has one of the best collections of stained glass windows on earth, and it really is a breathtaking experience. So you definitely have to check this out. So. Let's head in. Let's do it. I like the architecture. York, York Minster, Minster is one of the world's great cathedrals and serves as an amazing masterpiece of Gothic architecture. The magnificent cathedral has a history dating back over 1,000 years. Construction began in the 13th century and continued for several centuries, resulting in a masterpiece of unparalleled grandeur. It's just so crazy how they build stuff so big and so elaborate back then. The Minster's stunning stained glass windows, including the famous Great East Window, are awe-inspiring. The intricate stone carvings oh, wow. throughout the cathedral are equally impressive and create a sense of sacred grandeur. York Minster remains the vital center of worship offering daily religious services. So they still use it, it's not just a tourist thing. That's cool. Is that a Is that an old organ or something? Wait a minute. That thing's massive, but it looks like it wraps all the way around, so I don't know if that's just part of the architecture. I don't know. Whatever it is, it looks cool. Why can't they make elaborate stuff today? Like, look how elaborate this stuff is. Like, there's... It don't, it don't matter where you look. There's fine, incredibly fine details just everywhere. Make sure you travel beneath the minster into the crypt where you will find the tomb of St. William, the patron saint of York. And he's just in there, in that box, huh? now is St. Mary's Abbey. Now this is a Benedictine monastery from the 11th century, right? So this is almost a thousand years old. Wow. Right? It has a fascinating history and what I find so great about it is it's like this ruin but it's a park in the middle of York and there's amazing gardens around it and it's just something beautiful to see and really get up in close and personal with it and I mean look at this fine stone. There's a tomb you back there. Don't see things like this anymore, right? And you know, there's kids playing on it and there's a garden around it. It's definitely something to see when you're here in York. St. Mary's Abbey was founded in the 11th century and was one of the most powerful and influential abbeys in Northern England. After the English Reformation, the abbey was dismantled and has been a romantic ruin for centuries. Its striking ruins now stand as a reminder of the abbey's historical and religious importance to the city of York. I wonder if they made Abbey Ale there. Okay, everyone, that concludes our big tour of York, England. Now, York is one of my most favorite places in the world because of its 
famous medieval history and architecture. I mean, it really is an interesting place to see. Guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like this video, share this video with your family and friends, and uh, feel free to leave me a comment below. Uh, ask me any questions you may have. I get back to all my comments very quickly. Um, or leave me your suggestions. Okay, yes. until next time, guys. So, yeah what he said if you enjoy this video go over there make sure you click like on his original video that's only fair and click like on my video if you like to watch me learn and see stuff for the first time i do reactions on this kind of stuff i do reactions on you know uh, other countries a lot of the netherlands stuff uh and just like funny commercials and like just you know compilations of like dumb americans saying dumb stuff so if that's something you're into Help me get to the 100,000 subscriber goal and hit that subscribe button, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Have a super fun, awesome day. Bye.